Hello, and welcome back. Now that we know what Blast is and we have Blast installed on our computer, let's go ahead and actually use Blast. So there's a link in the uh, description to this video. I want you to go ahead and copy and paste that link into your browser. It's a link to a GitHub page. And the page should look something pretty similar to this. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this button that says code here. Click here to copy, or you could actually just uh, copy and paste it here. And then from our terminal, we're going to go to a directory where we want to put this stuff. So I'm going to go to my documents, bioinformatics. I will remove the old one. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, type git clone and paste that link into your terminal. If you want to paste using keyboard shortcuts, you can. You just have to press Control shift v That's how you paste into a, ter into a terminal. OK, and now we see that the blast practice data appeared. So let's go ahead and change into this directory and take a look around. So we see we have three things here. We have a new species.fasta, a queries file, and a readme.md file. Let's go ahead and first investigate what this new species thing is all about. So here we have the first line is a greater than symbol, and then the word new species. Uh, this is how fast A formats are. They are simply the greater than sign on the first line shows you what the name of the sequence is. So in this case, our sequence is called new species. And all of this would be the sequence itself. So this is, um, I went out into the jungle and sequenced, I found a new species that nobody knows about yet. And I sequenced its DNA using next generation sequencing. And this is, uh, this is the result I got. And we're going to investigate some things about this new species using BLAST. The next thing we want to check out is this queries directory. Um, here we have a couple different queries that we're going to investigate. And we're going to see if these DNA samples, which I also got from the jungle, are related to our new species or not. Or if, if they're, maybe we can't tell if they're related because they're, there's uh, just not enough information in them. So let's, let's look at one of these. So let's look at, um, for instance, this GAPS file. So here we have a sequence called GAP read. And that's the sequence there. Let's check out another one. Let's look at um, let's look at short. So here, short has two sequences. You could put as many sequences as you want into a FASTA file. There's no reason you would only. There's no limitation to how many of these you could have. So this one has two reads: short read one and short read two, and then the respective sequences are here. So FASTA format, as you can tell, is a really simple format. You just have a greater than symbol, the name of the read, the sequence itself. And you could have as many of those as you want. And that's all FASTA is. FASTA is super simple. OK, so um, now that we have BLAST installed, we could go ahead and we could try to see which, if any, of these sequences are, uh, are related to our, our new species, which ones of them share similarities to it. So the first thing we have to do is we can't actually just run a BLAST query of a FASTA file against another FASTA file. We have to create a database. So we'll go back here, and we're going to use this new species for our database. So we're going to type in make blast db into our terminal. Um, it's not showing up for me. Oh, I have to install blast. Okay, so sudo uh, sudo apt get install ncbi blast plus. And now I've got Blast. OK, so we're going to type the make Blast DB. And the first thing I'm going to run it with is the hyphen H flag. So this is something that all the um, all the programs that come with Blast, when you install Blast, you get a bunch of these programs like make Blast DB and stuff. They all have a hyphen H flag, which is how you get help about the program. So what this does is it just lists all of the possible, um, the possible parameters you could give the program. And uh, since nobody's really expected to memorize all of these, they, it's, it's good to know about this hyphen H. And if you want more specific help, instead of just doing hyphen H, you could do hyphen help. And now not only do you get 
the name of the parameters, but you get a little description as to how it's used. But for this, I just want hyphen H. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify an input file. So make blast db hyphen in, and our in file is going to be new species fast A. This is the file we're going to use to create our blast database. The next thing we want to do is we're going to do db type, db type, and I'm going to type nuclear. The next one we're going to do is out. And this out flag is how we store our database. So let me actually just show you what happens by default if you don't use an out flag. Uh, db type is missing. Did I spell it wrong? Let's see. Oh yeah, db type. Okay, there we go. So I just have to make sure that's nuclear. So let's, I'll show you what happens. So now we get a bunch of files and our database is just kind of dumped into the same file as all of our fast days and stuff. Um, I don't really like that because it just kind of clutters up everything we're doing here. So I'm going to delete all of these new files that we got here. So now we're back to our original three. And I'm going to rerun the command um, with the out flag. So I'm going to do out db slash new species. And this way, it puts everything into its own directory. So let's go ahead and list the contents of this directory. And so now we have our, our database is stored among all of these files. It's dis distributed amongst those files. Um, and if we try to investigate, like if we try to read one of these files, we're going to notice that it's kind of uh, it's kind of cryptic and not very useful for a human to read. That's because these are stored as binary. I even get a warning when I try to open it. So we get this kind of nonsense. So this, this database is not a human readable database. It's optimized so that Blast can, uh, can, can do its work very efficiently on that database. Okay, so now that we have our database created, let's go ahead and use Blast N. This is when you're comparing DNA sequences to DNA, you use Blast N. There's Blast P, Blast X, there's all kinds of Blast programs. Um, we're going to be using Blast N. And just like we did with uh, the make database command, we're going to first run it with the hyphen H. So we see a ton of parameters here. Again, I strongly, strongly recommend against trying to memorize every single one of these uh, because you really don't have to. They're here. You could, you could, uh, you could jog your memory by running this command, and also most of these, like, you're not going to have to use. Something like, uh, you know, some of these, like, sum stats, and, and all the, a lot of these are not really things that we're going to be going over in this video. We're going to be doing the more basic stuff. So let's go ahead and do our first query with blast. So blast n hyphen db is going to be our first one that we use. So we're going to specify which database we're going to use. We're going to do db slash new species. That's the name of our database. Um, and now we have to specify a query. So our query is any of these from our queries file. Let's let's uh, I'll press tab twice to get a list in my terminal of what all these could be. So we have let's see gaps, mismatch, repeat. Um, hmm. I don't know. We could start with. Let's start with mismatch might be a good one to start with. So we have this data here that we've collected and we're trying to see is mismatch related to our new species file in any way. Let's uh, let's check that out. And I'm actually going to dump this into a file called res for result. So now we could investigate our res file. I'm going to open it with vim. You could open it with your favorite text editor or less or whatever. It doesn't matter. And so here we have our blast file. Um, so we get the version of Blast at the top, kind of some of the people who made this and uh, some, some information about the algorithm and stuff, kind of details there. The name of our query and the length. So then we get this information, which is really the information about our match. So what this is telling us is that we have our query here and our subject. So our query would be the... Uh, the, the, the argument we passed the query and our subject would be in this case the new species and we can see that we have um, mostly matches here so whenever we see these lines between the two strands 
that indicates that it's a match. That indicates that there's a similarity between our query and something in our database. And whenever we don't see a line, that indicates a mismatch. So like A and T don't line up, uh, T and G do not match, etc. Um, we also get some other information up here. So we have a score, a bit score, which is, uh, in my in my experience, not the most useful thing. Um, it, could, it could come in handy for some reasons, but this is a bit score, and it's a little more difficult to interpret than some of the other scores. Uh, the, the really important one is the expected value. So for expected value, this is how many times we would expect to get a match this good given the length of our query and the size of our database. So this is a very, very small number. This is a 2e to the negative 95th power. This is like basically zero. That's a really good, um, it's a really good score. That means we're basically, we would almost never expect to get a match this good by chance. So if you just randomly generated two files, you know, one of, one of them being a query and one of them being the, the stuff we have in our database, almost guaranteed to not get a match this good. So that's great. That means that this is almost certainly significant. And we could, we could conclude that there's a strong similarity between our query sequence and some of the stuff in our database. Um, we have some more information here. We have gaps. So we could actually get gapped alignments. And we could see how many gaps there are. Uh, it says 1% of gaps. So that would be like insertions, deletions, things like that in the, in the DNA sequences. And the strand, we have plus plus. Sometimes you can have plus minus if it's like a reverse complement or something like that. But this one just says plus plus. All right, cool. So we found that the mismatch read, although it did have some mismatches, it was a it was uh, pretty close to what was in our database. Let's go ahead and I'm going to put this line here because I want to override what's in res, and I have I have the no clobber flag on my computer. You probably won't need to put that pipe there, but I'm putting it there. Um, let's go ahead and change our query to something else. Let's use short.fasta. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and open our res file again. And if we remember, this, this short fasta file contained two sequences, and we got no hits found. Um, the first sequence was length 8, and the second one was length 12. And we didn't find them in our new species DNA. So let's go ahead and really quick, I'm just going to split this terminal um, and make my, make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to go ahead and on the top here, I'm going to list and I'm going to just open up the new species file. And uh, then down here, I'll open the, the short reads.fasta. Okay, so here we have um, this sequence. So let's do a little bit of uh, investigation, a little bit of sanity check. So since we didn't find any hits for this sequence, we're probably not expecting this sequence to show up any times in this, right? That would just be a, a good assumption we can make. So I'm going to go ahead and use Vim to search this. In fact, no, I don't need to use Vim. I could, uh, I could do it this way. I could... I could use grep. So let's use grep. This is a Linux tool that we hopefully are a little bit familiar with. Um, I'm going to paste this pattern in here, and we're going to check for this pattern in our new species.fasta file. And we're going to see if it appears. And we use the O flag to only return matches. And so what we found is actually. This appears three times in our sequence. So this this uh, query in in our short reads appears three times here, but Blast still found no matches. So what's going on? Is Blast just like is it you know? And we know Blast uses a heuristic, not a perfect algorithm. Is it maybe missing it? Is it maybe uh, just not a very accurate and very good algorithm? Well, actually, what's going on is that Blast. Um, has a minimum word size by default of much larger than what this sequence is. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight, eight nucleotides long. And Blast's default word size is much larger than that. So it makes sense that it would 
not find um, those. So let's go ahead and set our word size. I believe that's it, just word underscore size. You could always run blast hyphen H if you wanted to look that up. Uh, let's make a smaller word size. So let's set our word size to seven. And now let's see if we get any hits. So now we're going to go here. We're going to open res. And see, now we do get some hits. In fact, we get quite a few hits. Um, but if we look at some of the some of the statistics that we looked at before, like our expected value, remember last time our expected value was very, very close to zero when we used the mismatch file? Well, look at this one. This is 4.9. So that means with a query of this length and a database of that size, we'd expect to get, um, we'd expect for us to find about five matches. So it is not very significant that we found three. We're expecting to find five just, just by chance. So basically we can conclude, and, and uh, some of them might be even, might have even worse e-values than that, I wonder. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a very bad expected value. Even like this one, point, point 0.38, basically is, is meaningless. Uh, and the reason, and this one is, is a little bit better, but still not very good. We'd expect this to happen about 3% of the time. So the reason that's so bad is because the query is so short that the odds of it appearing in our database is pretty high just by chance. So we really can't say these short reads are related to um, our new species. We really can't say that any, anything about that because they're just too short to make any, um, make any claims with any confidence at all.